Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. So today we're going to have some fun painting a cute little Valentine decoration. It's two gnomes. Um, I, of course, you can see the reference photo in the, the comments from the video. Um, so we're going to be working with a lot of grays and pinks, magentas, whites, blacks, uh, quite a mixture of pink, dark pink. If you don't have magenta, it's basically light pink and red mixed to make a dark pink. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm painting on a 20 by 20 canvas. Uh, it's not necessary. You can use uh, 11 by 14, uh, 16 by 20, whatever size canvas you have really, as long as you have enough room to do two characters. So we have the boy gnome on the left and the girl gnome on the right. So step number one would be to do the background on my canvas. So I've decided to do it in shades of light gray. Light gray, white, and black. And I even have a pre-mixed light gray. If you don't have it again, don't worry about it. You can use your white and black to make shades of gray. So I'm going to start off with my mixed color. It's called neutral gray. And I'm also going to add some white so I can make a bit of a lighter shade as well. A bit of white on the side. I'm using acrylic paint. I'm going to put a bit of black on my palette as well, just so I can play with some textures. So if you're tuning into my videos for the first time, my name is Stephanie Bond and I'm an artist in the gas bay. So this type of painting is a painting that any age can do really. So here I have my three colors I'm working with to do my background. I'm using a big brush. I never really point out exactly the exact size of my brushes. I like people to use what they have. I just say a big brush, small brush. This way there's not much like planning involved of going and buying extra material. Just use what you have to get the job done. So on my brush, I have pretty much my mixed gray with a touch of white. I'm just blending some texture, gray and white, back and forth. I'm going to cover my complete canvas with this gray color. And because I'm working on the video, I'm going to try to apply my paint as thinly as possible. So I always add a bit of water to my brush just to help my paint flow and go on thinly so it'll dry a bit faster while I'm working in the live video. So I'm making sure that I cover all my canvas and I don't see any white spots, even on the sides. I like to have my painting looking very finished when it's done, so I don't like to see any white canvas. You can almost see how I'm doing a crisscross. So I'm creating a bit of a texture back and forth. It's up to you. If you prefer to have a completely smooth background, you can go left to right, up and down. It's just the background. It's, there's no real, real right or wrong way to do it. It's just covering, the, covering your canvas.
If you prefer to do a background in beiges, browns, blue, whatever you really want to do, that's up to you again. Like maybe depending on where you're going to place your painting as a decoration, you may want to play with the colors of your wall. But I always find that gray and pink really look nice together, so I decided to do mine gray. I'm still working with my grays and my whites. So I want to keep it fairly light background. That way the characters will pop out more. like using a flat brush for backgrounds. I can get quite a lot of coverage quite fast. Any kind of little blobs of paint I like to make sure I keep it smooth. I can always check this later and touch it up if I need to, but I like to keep everything covered. So if I was painting, watching the video at this point, I would take maybe a 15, 20 minute break, get a coffee, let my background dry. I prefer working on dry paint versus wet on wet because the colors won't mix as much. But because I know I'm doing uh, the gnomes are a bright pink pinky red i'm going to start by doing the the hats while the paint is still wet but if i was doing this at home i would take a little break so now i'm going to mix my color for the boy gnome his hat is a little bit more reddish and hers is a bit more pink so i have a nice red color But I don't want it to be like Christmas red. I still want it to have a hint of pink in the red. So I'm going to add a bit of magenta or dark pink, whatever color you have. And I'm using a flat brush. Uh, this one has a bit of a round edge. It's not necessary. You can use any type of brush. I'm going to mix my color. So I'm kind of aiming for a, a reddish burgundy color. Now, if your paint is really dry and you wish to take a pencil and sketch your characters, of course, you can do so. It'll help you uh, 
plan out your painting a much much better I'm just going to do this freestyle so I'm showing you it's kind of a dark red it does have a pink tint to it so it's not like a bright bright red okay so I have a reference photo here on my laptop I'm referring to as I'm painting so I'm going to draw my little guy's hat it kind of comes up and they have always have these really long hats it's almost like one and a half times the length of their bodies it's kind of cute if you're more comfortable using a smaller brush which I may have to later on just to do the final outline you can use whatever you're comfortable using and because my gray is still wet you can see some textures coming through it's not always a bad thing or I can always let it dry and do a second layer layer later on this is just going to be our, our basis for the character so they kind of have these little squiggly hats Oh, I know I want to have the two bodies, faces touching each other. So I'm coming down just a little over half the length of my canvas. And I'm coming up like this. So I feel I want to make my hat a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna this way I'm filling up my canvas nicely. It's always important to pay attention to how much space you have just to make a good layout. Fill up your canvas. I'm just taking a bit of a smaller brush just to finalize the tip of my hat. I'll let this dry a bit and come back later on so now I'm going to do the girl hat facing so the girl hat is a bit more of a bright pink I have a color here mixed already bright pink Her hat is coming down.
taking a look so I know I have going to have two big noses touching each other here. She has a cute little red heart onto her hat. So I can do this now. Back to my red. I can use this small brush just to touch up the end of my hat as well. I'm just going to take a moment and touch up a bit of the red on his hat as well since it's drying a bit it'll go on a bit thicker. So I just want to make sure I have it nice and filled in. I'm just going to bring it out a bit so it meets a bit more. And play with your shapes till you're happy with what you're seeing. I'll go back to my flat brush. And just fill in the red a bit more. Reddish pink. You can see there's a slight difference, just enough to say that it's a different color. I'm going to just bring her hat in as well. Just a little bit more hat. You can see as I'm building my layers how the colors are really starting to pop off the canvas. This is the best thing about acrylic paint. Let it dry. If it gets too messy, come back and layer it again. You'll get some fantastic colors, bright colors. Okay, so I'm happy with my hats. I see one little end part. I'm just going to fix my end. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to do the two bodies which are almost like little bubbles and those are white. So because I'm working with pure white, I'm going to change my paintbrush for a clean one. Again, fairly large size brush. So I know I'm going to have the two big noses here. So I'm just kind of mapping out in my mind where they're going to go. They're actually touching noses. So it's almost like this kind of a shape. Two noses to put in later. A 
because I'm working wet on wet, I really want to avoid my white touching my pink. And I really want the bodies to be pure white. So I'm just running along the edge. And I'm going to have one nice little round body. Fill this in. And now the little boy body. So you have two circles. I just left a little bit of room up here for my big noses. So again, make sure everything is well color colored in with white. You'll notice some of my gray popping through just basically because I'm still working on wet background, which is kind of nice anyway. It gives a little bit of a texture, almost like the light is shining from the background. But you get the bat bodies really nice and white, it pops off the canvas. So that's the purpose of making sure you fill it in well. Okay, so my next step is going to be the noses. The noses are like a skin color. So I'm going to use some white. You can use yellow, a bit of yellow. just mix it together and I'm going to use like a tangerine orange color just a touch also if you have it if you don't have it you can use yellow and a bit of brown to make a skin color
going to add a bit of pink because I had a color kind of like a light tangerine but I still want it to be more skin color so I added a bit of pink to my mixture until I get a, a shade that I'm really happy with skin color is always a color we have to play with a bit so I'm getting there Add a bit more pink I'm getting there you can see Take your time when mixing a color sometimes can make a world of difference to the final painting. So take your time when you're mixing. Mix everything well. So I'm going to put this down as my base color and then I'm going to darken it a bit. So I'll start with this peachy color. I'm going to take a smaller brush and touch up my corners. This is just my first. So a nice round nose. Touching noses. If you accidentally touch something, don't worry about it. It can be dry. You can touch it up later. So I like this. So I'm just going to let this dry and I'll come back and make some textures on the nose to make them pop a bit more later. So while this is drying, we're going to work on the gray and white beard and the gray and white little braid that she has. So I already have my nice gray and white here. So I'm going to go back to a smaller brush. of his beard. Nice little brush. So his beard comes down. So I'm working with white and gray strokes. Just filling in the textures of his beard. Pulling it downwards, downward strokes. So white and gray on my brush, white, gray, playing around with the texture. It's a nice big beard, so it comes almost fills up really half of his body. comes all the way to the bottom of his body. It's all the way to the front of his body, under his nose. And a 
it touches her belly a bit. So it's covering the front. Just add a little bit of black to my gray just to make a bit of a darker gray. Just a bit of black. Just add in some extra textures. You want the beard to be nice and full. A little bit of white, gray, play around with your brush strokes. A nice fluffy beard. Okay, so I'm happy with my beard. Now I'm going to do her braid using the same gray. almost like little circles that touch each other. Little circle shapes. So four, four circles, one, two, three, four, and then a point at the end. So a little bit of black on my brush, just to do some details in the braid now. Just refer to your reference photo. And a little bit of white to do some highlights in the inner hair, some little highlights. Nice pure white on top of the gray. So a few layers brings it together. We'll come back later and add a little bow on her hair. Okay, so now I want to work on my noses a bit to make them pop a bit more. So I'm getting a little bit of brown to add to my peachy color. Add 
and a bit of brown in the peach. And I'm going to add a bit of yellow just to keep it bright. Just basically looking for a warm brown. So basically a darker shade of skin color. So just play around a darker shade in the peachy color. So. Just want to make sure my noses are well defined and showing up nicely popping off the canvas. So I don't want to see any background color in my nose. This is very important. So I added a bit of white on my brush just to create like using the same peachy color colors that I have, skin colors, create like a texture. But also the white kind of makes like a little light of the light shining on the nose to make it look a bit more round versus just a flat nose. So I'm just playing around and refer to your reference photo again. I will post my final uh, painting photo in the comments as well. Um, until you're happy with that nose. Some nice textures and layers here. The nose is almost like the character of the gnome when you think about it. His big nose really defines who he is. <laughs> and they're touching, they're touching noses. white on my brush just to get that reflection maybe a little hard to see on camera but zoom into your reference photo and you'll see what I mean there's a reflection there on the tip of the nose If you need to let the noses dry again to build up the layers, you can do so. I'm working wet on wet here, which is not always a bad thing. Also, it helps to blend your colors sometimes when you're working with various textures. So I'm quite happy with my noses. So the next step to the painting is playing with stripes, polka dots, and hearts to give our characters texture on their clothing. So going back to my red um, hat, I'm going to use the same color to make some nice little hearts. I'm just going to clean off using, I often use the same brushes when I'm painting. I guess I have some of my favorite brushes that I like to use and I just wash them off in my glass of water. Go back to my mixture of red here. I always like to add a bit of water to the paint that's been sitting here for 15-20 minutes so it'll get a little bit dry just to keep my paint nice and smooth so my nice red color and I also want to take the time just to do another small layer of red on his hat to make it pop so I'm going to go back to my red brush 
another layer will just really make that co color intensify. You can see it already. Oops, I can fix this after I had a bit of paint fall and cover it up after. No big deal. Focus on the hat. I'm going to add a bit more red paint to my palette. Now you can really see how nice this color looks with the gray background. If I want to add a little bit of textures to the hat, I can add some magenta in with the red and dark purple color. If you don't have magenta, a touch of blue sometimes in with red will make a darker red. I can add some more textures to the hat if I wish. If you want to just have solid color, that's up to you as well. I'm just playing around here. filling in my hat. So I'm happy with the shape. And now I'm going to make the little red hearts I mentioned on his outfit. So. Actually, I'm going to use a bit of a smaller brush. Just a tiny bit smaller so I can get my details.
there I have five hearts. Maybe I'll add one more, the bottom. That's cute. So I'm just going to touch up the little blob of red paint that accidentally fell on my beard. A little bit of gray paint. Okay. So while this is dry drying, I want my red hat to dry a bit also to put some stripes on it later. I'm going to come back to the girl and do uh, more textures on her hat with the pink color. So back to my bigger brush. Back to bright pink. If it takes two coats or three coats, Whatever you're happy with, this is the most important, is to get the textures, get the colors to pop off the canvas. really coming to life. You get to the point where you, you're you happy with something when you're painting. I'm happy with the shape of my hats. I'm happy with the coverage I have with the paint. It, it starts to get quite exciting as you start to see your painting coming to life. And this is the point where we're at right now. You can really feel the characters. Add an extra layer of red on the nice red heart hanging from her hat with my smaller brush. going to make some pink hearts and a nice little pink ribbon on her braid. Oh, I have a smaller brush for this actually. Using the same pink color. A nice little bow.
little pink heart. If you're painting a heart and you accidentally do a shape you're not happy with, leave it dry, take some white, cover it up, start over again. Don't worry too much about covering up acrylic paint uh, in layers. And if it helps you again to sketch your hearts with a pencil first, as I mentioned, you can always um, cover up the pencil marks with paint. So it works well. So I'm just touching up my hearts. You can let them dry a bit and I'll come back later and do a second coat of color on the hearts as well which I'm going to do right now on the red hearts using my same brush with red paint. I'm just going to add, oops, a bit more red. Just helps my little hearts to pop. my pink heart, add a bit more pink layers. So there we go. So now we just have to add some more texture to the hats for the final touch. I'm going to do some white polka dots on the pink hat. Because my hat is still a bit wet, it's going to be uh, basically turned to light pink polka dots. That's okay. If you want to let your, let your painting dry a bit right now, it would be ideal that everything is dry on the hats before you put in these dots. 
And I'm just going to work with things the way they are. I can always come back later and add a second layer of white to my dots. But it gives it a cute little texture. And that's okay as well. It's really cute. So now on my little boy hat, I'm going to have some stripes. a bit more white to my palette to make sure I have enough. I'm using the same brush to complete time. Just to create some cute little stripes. And I may go back later and touch up one more coat of white just to make sure it's pure white. Again, it's because my hat was still a bit wet so the red's coming through, but it's okay. It's really fun to see the colors popping now off the canvas.
So I think that's a really, really cute Valentine decoration. I'm anxious to put it up in my home, especially since we, uh, we had to take down our Christmas decorations a few weeks ago. So it makes a nice little change to decorate for Valentine's. So thanks for watching this video, everyone. And I look forward to seeing all your artwork. Uh, if you have a chance to post it in the comments. Okay, take care, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day.